Hello. I'm so pleased to have the chance to share with you a little bit of information about the Attachment Regulation and Competency, or ARC, treatment framework. My name is Margaret Blaustein, and along with Christine Kinneberg, I'm one of the developers of the ARC framework with the support over the years of many colleagues and providers and systems of care and, of course, youth and families. I'm going to briefly share uh, a short presentation about the ARC framework and what it is drawn from, where it comes from, and just some very simple information about what ARC is. So we'll talk very, very briefly about complex trauma and why it's important to have a comprehensive trauma framework. And then I'll briefly share some information about the ARC uh, model. So I'd love to pose to anyone who is listening to this to take a moment and just think about when you think of what it means to have a trauma-informed caregiving system or a trauma-informed approach to treatment, what are words that come to mind? What are phrases or images? My guess is that everyone listening to this is gonna come up with similar words. You're gonna think of things like safety and empowerment and respect and support for processing and metabolizing historical experiences. There's a lot of words that we can think of when it comes to trauma-informed care, and chances are they're gonna be fairly similar. The challenge becomes how to operationalize that. How do you operationalize safety? How do you operationalize empowerment? How do you support youth in building both an external environment that provides the safety they need to manage the stressors in their lives? And how do you support them in developing an internal sense of safety in their own experience of their body and their emotions and their experiences? So that's the challenge that we all face. Part of why we face this challenge is because trauma is such a complicated thing. We talk about trauma-informed care, but the reality is trauma isn't unitary. We use that word to capture a really wide range of experiences that children and families come to us with. The experiences that families face vary tremendously. Um, in terms of what they've been exposed to, the context of that exposure, the systemic and societal issues surrounding their experiences. And we know that there are so many different types of exposures, individual exposures, community exposures, systems level exposures, exposures that come as part of group membership, as well as exposures that are individually directed. And often exposures layer over time. We know that so many of the youth and families we work with have experienced not just one type of trauma, but many, many layers of exposure that continue over time and often aren't over at the time they come to us. And often the individual exposures, the ACEs that we see, um, are overlaid on a context of adverse community environments. So we're really wrestling with a lot of different things when we work to support children and families, and it's not enough to focus on how we target single experiences because so many of the youth and families we work with are living in chronic environments of stress from a variety of inputs. Now, you all know this, when kids and families come to you, um, they're used to these questions, right? What's wrong with you? What's your kid's diagnosis? What's up with these behaviors your child has? Um, and as providers, we can get sucked into that. Well, how are we going to stop these behaviors, right? Um, families are used to hearing, why can't my kid just behave? Why can't my kid just stop being aggressive? Why can't my kid just be more outgoing? What's wrong with me as a parent? that I can't stop this behavior. And how can this really be about things that happened in the past? Isn't that just an excuse, right? Now we wanna shift that lens because if all we use is the psychiatric or behavioral lens, 
um, we're going to view those behaviors as pathology. We're going to label those behaviors with diagnosis. And our intervention is going to solely be focused on stopping the things that often are functional, that kids are doing for a reason. We're not coming at it from a focus of trying to understand root causes. We're coming at it from a lens of something is wrong with you, your child, your family, and we need to end this pathological approach to the world. When we take a trauma lens, uh, we take a different approach and we ask the question, what has this child experienced in their life? What has this family experienced? What has this community experienced? We start from an assumption that experiences make sense. We try to understand the child or the family or community lens for the world, for themselves, for others and relationships. We try to understand how the child and family has learned to manage their internal experience, why their behaviors may be adaptive in their world, and how these behaviors make sense. So we want to think developmentally. Trauma, like all experiences, shapes the And development is shaped really in two primary ways, right? Number one, kids get better. Uh, at all of those skills and adaptations they need to survive their environment and get their needs met. And they do less focus on all of those domains of development, which are less immediately relevant to their survival. So what that means for intervention is number one, uh, we need to focus on the environment surrounding the child. We need to help kids feel a little bit safer. Because as long as kids continue to feel like they're in danger, it doesn't matter how much skill they have, they have to continue to engage in those survival skills that help them navigate that unsafe world. So we need to work to make the world around the child a little bit safer. And often we do that by targeting the caregiving system. Then we want to help kids and the people around them really recognize their survival strengths right, to really understand and approach their behaviors and their responses to the world from a more empathic lens. And at the same time, we want to give kids some agency over how often those survival skills are activated. And finally, we want to scaffold and support the range of developmental capacities that youth may not have had an opportunity to develop over time. And this is where ARC comes in and what ARC is rooted in. We really um, started the development of ARC from a place of curiosity of trying to really understand how trauma and attachment impacted behavior and impacted the course of development, impacted child experience. We really wanted to look at a developmental lens to understand the range of normative capacities that develop over the course of childhood. And then to think about the ways that trauma and attachment stress impact those developmental capacities. And then ultimately to really focus on resilience. What do we know uh, predicts to resilient outcomes over time for youth who experience stress? And we focused in our framework on those developmental capacities that all youth need that are important to predicting to positive outcomes over time and that we know are impacted by traumatic stress. We thought a lot about what we do when we work with youth and families who've experienced trauma, what the core concepts are of intervention and thinking about how can we take those core concepts and translate them into the range of systems of care in which youth receive treatment and particularly paying attention to concepts that are adaptable and contextualizable, meaning that whether I am working with a child in Boston, here where I'm based, or in Alaska, where we have colleagues working with young children, or in uh, Australia, what are the concepts that we're continuing to focus on with youth and families, knowing that the ways we address those concepts are necessarily going to differ by population, by systems of meaning of the families and communities that we're working with, by who I am as a provider. So the concepts translate across populations and service systems, but the context necessarily shifts how we engage in those concepts with youth and families. 
We've collaborated with a very wide range of child and family serving systems over time, and all of this has informed our work. And we've trained really at this point and collaborated with agencies all over the world. And all of those have continued to provide us information. So ARC is built around three primary domains, attachment, regulation, and competency. Ultimately, we're trying to support safe caregiving systems, to support youth in regulating their experience, and to scaffold and support normative developmental capacities that predict to positive outcomes over time. All of our work rests on three critical foundational strategies that come into everything that we do. In everything that we do, we ask, are we engaged? Is the child engaged? Is the family engaged? Is the system engaged? What is the stake in this process? We think about education. How are we bringing information into our work, both to share and to receive? And how are we building predictability and rhythm into our work? Each of our domains rests on core targets of intervention. So in Attachment, we think about caregiver affect management, attunement, and effective response. Importantly, the attachment system encompasses any adult or caregiving system that has an influential impact on the child and family, which means primary caregivers, but it also means systems of care. It may mean teachers and surrounding systems in a school setting. It means all of us as providers. So we're not just doing these concepts, we're engaging and examining these concepts in ourselves. The regulation section focuses on identification and modulation, how we help children understand internal experience and then over time build skills and capacities to modulate and manage that experience. And then in competency, we focus on relational connection, executive functions and self-development and identity, all skill sets that we know over time support youth in being able to engage purposely in their lives, these reflective capacities on self and other. ARC is built in multiple layers, meaning that everything we do is in support of the level above. So we are trying, for instance, to support safe caregiving relationships. We do that by focusing on these core sub-targets, which we just named, for instance, attunement. We focus on the core target by tuning into key sub-skills. So for instance, in the case of attunement, you can see here some of the sub-skills that are listed. And then at the very bottom, uh, of the pyramid is the techniques. Now you can use many different techniques in service of the goals that we have, but we don't wanna use techniques just for the sake of techniques. When we do anything in our work in intervention, in relationship building, in the systems of care that we're in, we wanna think about how the techniques that we use support the skills that we're focused on, which support the targets or goals, which are ultimately in support of the overarching concept. At the end of the day, all of our work is in support of trauma experience integration, which we define as supporting youth and families in being able to actively engage in present experience. Our assumption is that trauma interferes with that capacity. We don't see trauma experience integration as separate from all of the rest of the work that we do. We see it as in many ways, the sum of this work. That's a much longer conversation than is possible in this brief introduction. And so there is the ARC framework. Um, we hope that you are able to draw something from bringing these concepts into your own work. And we welcome all the connections and collaborations that we have. Thank you so much for all that you do to support youth and families.